Hi everybody. Sorry that my audio is going to be a bit different at the moment. I'm having to use a more ghetto setup because I was not planning on filming at the moment. It's the weekend. I've got work done. I've been messing around in the garage with bismuth. I cast an eight ball to try and make like a crystal filled sphere. But I was happy playing with the bismuth. And as it was cooling down, I tried to make some crystals. Why is it that whenever I have the camera off, I can do things? I can guarantee you by the end of this video, I'm going to show you some very large and amazing crystals that I can guarantee I have them upstairs. I just want to try and do it again. If we fail, we fail. Now, as with the last time I tried this, I need to let the temperature slowly go down. So I've turned it down a little bit. I'm now going to wait a while, come back, check on it, and adjust the temperature from there. Okay, so it's been on our sort of three-quarter temperature for about 15, 20 minutes. I'm now going to let it, because it's just turned back on, I'm going to let it come back up, and then I'm going to turn it down a little bit more and get it to drop its temperature again. And then I want to catch it like I did last time when the top was solidifying and I could just pull these crystals out. It was amazing to see. Okay, so it's been a few more minutes. And I'm now going to take the top off. One last skim. So now I've skimmed it again, I've turned it down a little bit more. And this, I think, is where it's going to start happening. Right, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit more. I've now adjusted it down to half power, slowly, slowly solidify the bismuth. Such a waiting game and never knowing when's the time to pounce. You leave it too late, it's all over. Do it too early. You're stopping crystals forming. Oh, there is something forming in the center. Okay, this is what I did last time. Pried them off the outside. Here we go, here we go. Over the heat. You don't have long before this all stops. That's probably crystallising more, so I'm going to let it go for a while and I can pull it out. This is going a crazier mix of colours than I think I've ever seen it. As it cools down in different areas. Now there's obviously a, a, a particular transition point. Get off. 
Okay, so the results from this were this piece here, which has got some really big crystal growth, but it's too much bismuth attached, so that can go back in the pot for next time. And then there's this one, which is way better than my previous crystals, but it's not as good as the ones I did earlier on off camera. So let's go upstairs and have a look at those now. Okay, I'll show you those big crystals in a minute, but first I want to just show you the progression of trying to grow these over time. Uh, some of these were made in videos, a couple of them weren't, but yeah, you can see. So we started out with a splat, basically, that had some crystal structure in it, and I was quite pleased to see that. Nice colours too. And then we have this one, which, as you can see, is really nice to find shapes on it, but unfortunately it's just very small. Continuing on, we got a nice structure here, very square and different. This is the amazing thing, you get different things every time. This one is one that I did off camera, uh, and as I think you can see that would have formed into something much larger if it had been given a bit more time. You can see this time we started to get much more defined layers, much larger crystals, but still not great. Again, not great. Nice colours in this one, but just a couple of crystallisation points. And then there's an assortment of small little bits that I kept. So now let's move on to the crystals I did today. This is the one that you saw being filmed. And you can see just how much bigger and more detailed this is. And now the ones that I made today. As I say, I'll give you a better look in a minute because this is quite dark. But you can see the scale difference. And then we get to the big mamma jamma. Look at the size of that. So as you can see here, this is the one that I grew in this video you actually saw me pull out. And just look at the amount of extra layers and things there are to it. Obviously, I've now understood the process and I've worked out where the temperatures are right. Because I was able to reproduce what I did earlier on. So there's that one. And so here's another one that I did today. They always have a better angle, sort of like that. Continuing on, this one's kind of mad look. It's like a, it's almost like a city or something, or like an old castle staircase. Excuse my grubby fingers, I've been doing a lot of work with glue and on greasy motorcycles lately. There's only so much I can do. This one's a bit messy on one side, but it's kind of mad, because if you look at it from this direction, you can see all the squares. Then if you turn it around this way, there's an entire line of them as they've formed. Okay, but here's the big one. As you can see, this is way bigger than all the other ones that I've made. It's got all sorts of different colours on it. It's just really mad to think that this is something that is naturally formed by the metal itself. There's no human process here, well, apart from purifying it and melting it down and letting it solidify over a long period of time, but the point is this is natural. And as someone who's interested in science and physics and nature and metalwork and all those sorts of things, it just blows my mind. Surprisingly, these are actually quite light, which is good because it means it doesn't use so much bismuth, but unfortunately, as much as I want to grow bigger crystals than this, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Um, I would need quite a bit more bismuth. I've probably got about a kilo and a half raw that I can use, maybe maybe, uh, maybe a bit more than that actually, if I throw a couple of the not so good crystals in there. Uh, but to grow something much bigger than this, I'm gonna need a lot more bismuth. And as I previously mentioned, it costs 30 pounds a kilo, uh, very expensive. I tried finding a UK supplier. Uh, I actually emailed a company and they said that they sold it by 1.5 kilos or 10 kilos or like 20 kilos. So I was like, ah, this will be my way in to get something cheaper. And they want, remember I'm paying £30 a kilo delivered, they wanted £69 plus £19 delivery per 1.5 kilos. I, wow, just wow. So amazingly, the cheapest place you can buy bismuth right now and know that it's going to be kind of okay, not AliExpress, or is it actually pure bismuth or not when it turns up in, you know, several weeks, 
is Amazon. Uh, but they've actually sold out of it at £30 a kilo. I'm not paying £40 a kilo. So for me to make much larger crystals, it's going to cost a fortune. And it's something that the channel of my size just couldn't do. Um, but it's been fun to play with bismuth and show you this. If I can find bismuth cheaper or find a company that want to work with me, um, I can do more in the future. But for now, this may be it. But I will, if I make bigger ones than this in the future, I'll do a video. So there you go, from splat to fully formed crystal. It's been amazing fun making these videos for you and for myself. If you enjoyed them, please remember to hit that like button. Remember there's been about four or five videos at this point, including casting some Velociraptor claws in bismuth. Yes, these. Check it out. Subscribe if you're new here. I'm on my way to 100K and I appreciate the help. And if you really want to help support this channel, consider checking out the merch links in the description and also my Patreon, which gives you access to videos early and it also allows you into the Discord. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.